How did Arsenal see off Spurs to stay in the title race? Did Manchester City get away with one against Nottingham Forest? And will the title race go down to the wire? We're going to bring you some weekend reaction here. I'm joined by Sam Ty and Abby Summers. Um, Abby, let's start with you on the North London derby. How did Arsenal see off Tottenham Hotspur? What did Arsenal do that limited Tottenham? Uh, Arsenal basically just watched what happened with Spurs against Newcastle. They kind of saw exactly how to do it. They, they knew that they could give Spurs all the possession that they wanted and they knew where to hit them and hurt them. Everyone knows Tottenham can't defend set pieces very well. Arsenal are the best at it, especially in the last, you know, kind of four or five months since you came back from Dubai. Um, and <laughs> That's it. Go to Dubai uh, and you win Dubai. the Premier League. That, that's basically it. Just go to Dubai and that will help. Um, yeah, I, th I think looking at that, it was, you know, Spurs kind of led themselves to their own downfall. You know, I felt the first kind of 15 minutes Spurs were in it. They, they, they were putting it about a little bit. They had some chances, but, you know, they just mucked about at the back, you know, then that led to a set piece and then you capitalised on it and took your chances. I think also the way that Spurs play, very narrow, you know, we've got a very small kind of front line. That also led to Arsenal saying, no problem, we can just kind of, you know, keep you compacted here in the middle. That's where you want to go. And all this width on, on the wings and the flanks you're not actually utilising. So I think if anything, Spurs really played kind of into, into Arsenal's hands at the weekend. Um, and obviously Arsenal tried to let us back into the game with a few mistakes. Um, just to keep it interesting. Just to keep it interesting. It's Arsenal like didn't play very well. They, 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 they didn't. didn't. And they, they didn't. Arsenal fans may not appreciate us saying that, but I don't think they played particularly they well. They appreciate me saying How did... <laughs> or me or anyone really. I mean, they're trying to keep the momentum and, and, and the vibe going but set pieces counter attacks a bit of fortune because let's face it that van der ven goal is yeah. is an inch or so offside and it's, and it's at a crucial a moment in the game that could change absolutely everything arsenal come out the right side of it and then at the end i mean look as as, as poorly as, as spurs may be perceived to have played at different points here in this game they have made arsenal like squeal basically but haven't have they, they or have arsenal gifted than that because if you look at the two Spurs goals there's a David Ryan mistake where yep. he's played it straight mm -hmm. to Romero and then there's a, a clumsy foul Absolutely. which leads to a penalty kick if you actually watch the game back and I'm sad enough to have done that you know <laughs> Tottenham had two attempts on target yeah. in their home game so actually I think there's an argument that says it was Arsenal gifting Tottenham away back into the For game sure. rather than Spurs that's, making them squeal. That's, that's fine but the situation in the 90th minute is it's 3-2 and I'm watching a defence that I have praised all season long. Arsenal's centre-back pairing and defensive line and set-up. I've praised all season long as not only the best defence in the league, but a probably a top five Premier League historical pairing since 1992. They are that good in terms of goals conceded, actually against everything. They are panicking. That Arsenal defence is panicking for the last six minutes. They are, they are trying to put out fires. Mm -hmm. They are running to and fro. It is crazy. And you can see, I think for the first time this season, I saw those Arsenal, Arsenal defenders going, oh, oh God, here we go. Yeah. And they've been so cool and composed all campaign long. Even at places like the Etihad, it didn't look like that. No. It did not look like that. No. And I think the occasion was also there. And obviously, you know, Arsenal fans will maybe tell a different story today. But I, I think that it, it's on Spurs because the problem was in those last six minutes, if you had someone that actually could finish and was strong and hold the ball up and an aerial threat, in that box, I know Richardson did come on, but let's say we had Harry Kane, I think it's a different story, and I think we actually do leave with something. You know, I, I think we we get it back to three three. Um, but look, credit to Arsenal because they have been the best defensive side. The last couple of games, I've have I have had some question marks since since kind of the Bayern game. Um, but you know, you came what you, you came to do. You, you saw the game out. Tottenham made it very easy for you to do that. Fed into your plan and into your hands, and it meant the second half you kind of just sit back. And yes, it was mistakes that allowed Tottenham to kind of get a little bit of a foot back in the door. But you know, I, I think the tactical. The, the tactical side of the game from from and was was not particularly not particularly good and you know Spurs's lack of aerial threat is going to continuous continually cost on them just finally before we move on from this game and look at the other title contenders Manchester City um I'm, yes I'm ruling Liverpool out at this stage um Abby I'm sure that you felt that you should have had a penalty, that Tottenham Hotspur should have had a penalty in the first half mm. for a coming together, shall we say, between Leandro Trossard and Dejan Kulusevski. Yeah, I'm not going to sit here and say that, oh my God, it's, you know, as stonewall as it comes. But I think that in this modern day football where you see a lot of soft penalties, I think that that definitely should have gone to a review, which I don't believe it actually did go to a review. So that was something that was interesting. And also kind of the, the, the reaction from maybe Michael Oliver to, to not, 
give the Ben Davis one, which was so clear and obvious and VAR actually did look at, and thank you for looking at that, um, and did give it. I think there was just some questionable moments, but I would still say, you know, Tottenham... Tottenham haven't been fruitful up front you know they're they're not being that attacking exciting team that we saw the first half of the season um and you know kind of creating this this attacking threat that we had done so yeah we can say maybe we should have had a pen or the Mickey van der Ven one should that have stood you know we saw early in the season the West Ham one was given against Spurs at home and and the goal stood they're very very similar goals um so looking at that, but at the end of the day, Spurs led to their own downfall. So I think if I, I always felt if, if Arsenal won that game, then part of me thinks they will probably win the league now. Sam, was it a penalty? I'll get your thoughts. Is you're you're coming at it from a more neutral angle. Is this the, the clips the heels thing? Yeah. Yeah. Nah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> did uh, did Manchester City uh, get away with one this weekend? I have to say, going into the weekend as an Arsenal man, at no point did I think that Manchester City were going to drop points against Nottingham Forest. But when it's 25, 30 minutes in, you're starting to wonder if there's something on the cards. I was still in the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at that point, and I heard a loud cheer, which told me <laughs> that Manchester City uh, had broken the deadlock in that one. Um, Sam, it wasn't a great Manchester City performance, but they got the job done, and that's what matters at this point in the season. It does not matter how you play at this point, unless you're in mid-table and you're like Crystal Palace and you're looking to put roots down for next season, you're looking for the new manager to sort of set in stone what he wants to do, take that momentum into the summer and then attack next season. Unless you're in that situation, it does not matter how you play right now. With three games to go, it is about putting results on the board and putting points on the board by hook or by crook. And City have done it. And they will continue to do this. I don't think we should expect many glamorous, you know, swashbuckling displays from Manchester City between now and the end of the season. Mm. I know everyone tends to ignore Pep Guardiola when he goes on a rant about player welfare because he then goes and uses zero subs and everyone goes, what's he on about? <laughs> but the, the, the point remains, and it is salient, that this team is knackered. You watch it in the FA Cup semi-final, they, they just didn't have it in them to match Chelsea yeah. energy-wise. And so taking that on board, City are going to grind through games and they ground through this one and then some. Like, they got a bit lucky. Like, Chris Wood, jeez. And then there's one that Edison drops from the set piece from the corner that, that could somehow doesn't find its way in. There's three golden chances there to put the cat amongst the pigeons. It, and, and yes, I think I'm sure that you, were, you and the other Arsenal fans are watching that going, oh, could that not just have been? But they got away with it. <laughs> Chris Wood is no longer on my Christmas card list. Let's put You've it that way. You've got to have a bit of luck to win a league, don't you? And I think that City are... They, I don't think, actually, if I look at the season overall, they haven't played the most exciting brand of football at all. But no. you don't need to if you're City. You can kind of go at the league at a canter until a certain point and then they know when to turn it on, when to click into gear. Um, and the Forest game, I thought they'd be more on it because obviously Forest are fighting for their lives as well. So it was interesting, the Chris Wood thing, but but, you know, love to see it. 32% conversion rate and uh, couldn't convert the other day, could he? I'm sure you did love to see it. Um, <laughs> just on the title race and it potentially going down to the wire, uh, we saw Arsenal beat Tottenham Hotspur this weekend. That was one of the fixtures that people were looking at as a potential banana skin. They still have to go to Manchester United, a place where they have a, a dreadful record in recent years. Sam, is this going all the way down to the wire or can you see either side dropping points between now and the final weekend? Arsenal fans... Better hope City drop points before the final weekend because I look at that matchup on the final day where Man City have got West Ham at home, which is probably David Moyes' last game. Will he not want to go out with a bang? And they've got absolutely nothing, nothing to play for here. Like watching West Ham at the moment, you for ten, between 10 minute spells, you think they're either on the beach or they, they think they're in contention for the Champions League and they flip between them. But by the end of the season, they won't, they won't be anywhere near this. They'll just be on the beach. They always lose at the Etihad. Six, last six trips to the Etihad, lost, sometimes quite convincingly. You guys better hope that this happens somewhere in a midweek here. City obviously have to go to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, a place they absolutely hate. I know they won there earlier in the season. That was in the Cup, and that was almost the anomaly, wasn't it? It's almost always Tottenham getting the result there. Yeah. So you better hope so. And there are still opportunities. Wolves, not an easy game, but yeah. I think it's Fulham. I think it's Fulham away is the one that I'm looking at now because I, I, th I think they beat Wolves and I'm, I think you're right. I think they beat West Ham. And as for Tottenham Hotspur, I cannot for the life of me see Tottenham Hotspur <laughs> doing Arsenal a, a favour like Ful that. Fulham are that team though, aren't they? They're that weird yeah. team where like they they're just so turn up against the big... because they're like also to extremely play. inconsistent, Fulham, mm. as well. You're, they're such a mixed bag. But then Wolves are a bit of a mixed bag as, uh, as yeah. well. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. I, for one... 
from a Spurs perspective, I'm more than happy for City to come and take three points off us. Yeah, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Let us know how you think the title race is going to go. Is it a final day job or is somebody going to slip up uh, ahead of time? Let us know in the comment section below.